Yo, what is up guys? Hope you're having a great day. Today I want to let you guys know what I thought about the first Halo Infinite Flight, otherwise known as the first tech preview. However, before we begin, I do want to mention that this entire flight was mostly focused on testing the servers slash bots. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. There was a brief moment where we got to play PvP, and I have to say, the game played entirely different compared to bots, which was expected. I mean, man, dude, I had some... <laughs> it was so sweaty. I mean, <laughs> the fact it was social arena and every game I had was super sweaty, I was getting farmed real hard, and then I kind of started to adjust. He started to, like, actually get kills and stuff, but it, it played entirely different. Many of my opinions, I think, will certainly change once we get, like, the actual PvP experience and get more than two hours like we did on the the first flight if you guys can also do me a solid and consider liking the video as well as subscribing as we're on the road to 1k subs greatly shows your support for more halo content and yeah you know i'll make sure to keep it coming with that being said the key points i want to talk about today is the weapons the equipment the maps the movement the bots the customization the audio the ui and the performance I think that covers just about everything. There's probably a couple things I missed out, but um, I tried to cover like all the bases. So let's begin with the weapons. The weapons, I felt, were pretty balanced overall. Um, there is some minor tweaks needed on some guns, but overall it felt pretty, pretty balanced, I would say. The AR felt strong close range, but it was also good mid-range. It does tend to spread, it has a lot of spread when you hold down the trigger, but if you do burst fires, you could kind of get some mid-range kills. Some people say it's a strong AR, but I still found myself choosing the BR or other precision weapons over the AR. Whenever you use smart scope with the AR, you can't get D-scope, which really solidifies the point of it being more of a close and mid-range weapon. I think that's they were doing that because they really want the AR to be more of a close to mid-range weapon because I feel like in previous Halos it's always been more of an SMG which I found kind of weird like in Halo 1 it was more of an SMG for sure and then Halo 2 they actually just got rid of it <laughs> and replaced it with the SMG because that's essentially what its role was and like in Halo 3 as well um, it just felt like a SMG like I don't know I, I think this is a good change because it makes it feel like an actual rifle um, but I think maybe a slight nerf on the damage could help, or just get rid of the headshot damage. But I think I'll leave that up for the community to decide, because I found myself pretty fine with it. But if we were to nerf it or something like that, I think getting rid of the headshot damage or just slightly nerfing the damage on the gun will make it a lot better. So I want to move on to the BR. The BR in this game felt like the typical BR to me. It wasn't a laser like in Halo 5. It actually had like spread. Like it actually shot three bullets. It, was, <laughs> it wasn't just, it was an actual burst gun. It wasn't a straight up laser like Halo 5's BR. But you know, it was just your typical BR. Um, it was still generally easy to use. I don't have much to say about it because yeah, it just felt like the typical BR. But it is good to see it have the more classic art style of the BR we all know and love instead of that weird looking one we got in Halo 4 and 5. The Commando is is actually probably becoming my favorite weapon now. I love the Commando and the Commando in my opinion outshines the BR and that sounds insane because the BR is like that one weapon that that people have chosen over everything because you know it's that weapon that just is pretty much good against everything and the reason I believe the commando is better than the BR is because if used properly or rather skillfully so when you kind of like tap fire and not just hold down the trigger you can actually kill people insanely faster than the BR and it can be very accurate because of that if you just tap fire it's insane Although I will say, I mean, this goes with everything, but we were up against spots which didn't strafe much and were easily predictable. So it's hard to tell if you'll be able to land all the commando shots as easy, easily as I did. But yeah, the commando, man, I mean, that thing just shreds. It's crazy. Sidekick, I found really fun to use. Instead of like an overpowering magnum like CE... And Halo 5, it was more like an actual sidearm. It could be used for like long range shots to kind of like tap fire some people to prevent someone from killing you with like a BR or something. Like if they're zooming in on you, you could probably like hit them with the pistol a couple times just to stop them from like scoping in on you. 
but it's very hard to get a long range kill with the sidekick. I think it is possible, but extremely rare because the sidekick is definitely more of a close range weapon. It has a really high fire rate, making it deadly at close range. And in a nutshell, it's basically the gunfighter magnum from Halo 5. I saw some people talking about, I think, buffing it or nerfing it. I don't know. I think it was both. I really don't know, but I found the sidekick in a good position. I did not think it was, um, it was too overpowering or too weak or anything like that. I, I thought it was a a good weapon overall. Now the needler in this game is lethal. It's probably one of the strongest needlers we've ever seen. The reason it's so deadly is because of how silent and difficult it is to see the needles. Not only that, but the tracking is insane. I believe they should make the needles glow a bit brighter and make it so it's not so quiet to maybe help balance out how good it is. That way you can at least be able to see the pink mist of death before you die. Yeah, I mean, the needler... Luckily, you can't dual wield in this game, because <laughs> dual wielding needlers would be so overpowered. I mean, I don't want it to become useless, like in Halo 2 or Halo CE. Uh, Halo 3, it was okay, I think. And then the Needler started becoming useful by Halo 4 and Reach and 5. And in Halo Infinite, I feel like, I don't know, it's been buffed a bit. The Plasma Pistol felt really weird in this game. It felt like it was a projectile, but at the same time, hit scan. This weapon just generally felt weird to me. I don't know if it's because... I've been playing Halo 3 a lot, and so when I use a plasma pistol, uh, the plasma pistol, you know, tends to be like an actual projectile. It's like a slow projectile, it's not super fast. And coming to Infinite, it, it felt so weird because I was like leading my shots a lot, and I just couldn't tell. It was weird. I couldn't tell if it was projectile or hit scan. Maybe it's like a super fast projectile, but I don't know. I couldn't get over that. It was, it was very, it was strange. I don't know. When shooting up the charged up shot, it does feel like the tracking of the shot was decreased, which I'm okay with. But I, I just couldn't get over the, the regular shots. It felt like you had to lead your shots, but at the same time, it, you didn't. And, you know, I barely picked it up for that reason. So I can't really properly ju judge this gun. I think I need more time to uh, test it out. So many people were angry about the classic shotgun being replaced with the Bulldog, which is understandable. The classic shotgun is a un unique looking weapon in Halo. As for the bulldog, looks more like a generic shotgun. Um, when I picked up the shotgun, it <laughs> it reminded me a lot of the Doom shotgun, which is not really something you want. But but who knows? You know, maybe getting like a cool skin where it changes like the the way the gun looks. Um, maybe you could get like a classic shotgun skin, or maybe they'll add the actual shotgun. But from my experience, I enjoyed the bu bulldog. It was cool being able to shoot faster and having more range. There's not much else I can say about it. It didn't feel too overpowering or weak. It took about like two or three shots per kill, of course, depending on like how close the enemy was on you. And it, it just fit in quite well. There was not much to say about it. Um, I wish it looked a lot better because it does look like your generic shotgun you see really anywhere in a, any other sci-fi universe. The Pulse Carbine is such a strange, interesting weapon. It's not too good close range as well as long range, but it's great at mid range. It takes about like two bursts per kill. I just, I just found it interesting because it's like, it's the first weapon I've ever seen be more of a mid range only weapon. Um, and it was, I don't know, it was weird because close range, it, it was hard to kind of get kills with and long range as well because the projectiles are a little slow so when you would try to get a long range kill they would probably like dodge it pretty easily but mid range is a sweet spot and I, it's just so interesting that this weapon is like it's the only weapon i've ever seen only be good or meant for like mid range combat it, it's interesting and i actually like this concept i think it's really awesome a lot of people were saying that it sucks and i was one of those people as well i thought it was like terrible weapon and that it needed to be buffed but after you learn how to use it you you can really see what they were going for and i i like that i like how it's a mid-range more of a mid-range weapon only and I, I think that's awesome but yeah this is another weapon i think i need more time to test out with because i struggled using it but there was times where i did completely melt, melt people so i think this weapon is something i need to spend more time with but i can definitely see what they were going for and i think that's really cool And the gravity hammer, man, the gravity hammer in this game, I mean, I talked about this on my thoughts on Halo Infinite video. You guys can go check that out if you want. 
And yeah, I still stand with what I said in that video. It really does show it has a role now, instead of somewhat being a clone of the energy sword. It has like an area of effect attack, meaning you could take down several opponents. However, it no longer has a lunge to it, making it more skillful to use. So if you miss a swing, it could mean game over for you. Pretty much dead. Um, unless, of course, your opponent kind of like fails at shooting you. <laughs> you know, things could go both ways. And it just truly represents a brute's like loving destruction. I, I love this new role for the gravity hammer. I think it's awesome. As for like the energy sword was more sleek and clean. Like it fits the elites, like the this energy sword fits the elites, you know, it's more sleek and clean and honorable. And then for the gravity hammer, you know, brutes love like destruction and stuff, so it, it just fits the role so much more perfectly. I think it's so awesome. So let's talk about the power weapons on this flight. The sniper looks great in this game, but for some reason it was hard to shoot with. Now I can't exactly put my finger on it, but I'm just going to assume it's because there's probably no aim assist, or at least minimal aim assist. And I actually like the idea that many of these weapons having less aim assist, because Halo has always had far too much aim assist, that sometimes when I'm trying to shoot an opponent who's one shot next to another enemy, I can't switch. I can't switch to the other target because, you know, my aim assist is so latched onto the guy in front of me, making it so I can't switch targets and clean up the guy who's weak. Of course, controllers do need aim assist, but not the absurd amount the previ previous Halos had. So the point I'm trying to get to is that I like how aim assist, and by the looks of it, bullet, bullet magnetism has been lowered, therefore making the sniper much more skillful to use. It may not be welcoming to casuals, but it, I think having a weapon where it takes time to learn is cool. There will be more respected players who use snipers. Now the skewer is a weird weapon to tackle. The reason I say this is because it's essentially a sniper, but worse. Sure, it's a one hit kill, but the long reload time and being able to shoot only once at a time is very dreadful. I saw, m I saw many people not even bother picking up the skewer. The thing is, I don't think it's a bad weapon. However, it seems very clear that this is more of an anti-vehicle weapon. So I would love to test this out, test this out on a vehicle. It's in the same sense of a Spartan laser, where whereas it's meant for vehicles and can be used on Spartans, but it's just not ideal. I think the skewer would be a great replacement for the Spartan laser, because the Spartan laser um, is very easy to use and just laser vehicles out of the sky. So if they completely replace the Spartan laser with the skewer, I'll be absolutely fine with that, because the skewer does does take some skill to use. Of course, against players, it takes a lot more skill because there's smaller targets, but when, like, let's say you're using it on vehicles, it's going to be a lot easier since the vehicles are bigger targets. Um, and it's like an actual projectile and it has drop off, so, you know, it's a lot more skillful than the, uh, the Spartan laser, which is literally a laser. <laughs> The heat wave is a tricky one. I think this is another weapon I probably need more time to kind of like learn how to use. It's pretty much a reformed scatter shot. The projectiles of this weapon bounce around and have a weak tracking to it. The cool part about this is that the projectiles can pierce through enemies. I think this is probably the, well not the first gun because technically the sniper you can get, yeah the, the sniper does pierce but this is probably the second weapon we've ever had. That had like a piercing to it and so i think that's pretty cool it can shoot horizontally and vertically so it has an alt fire mode which is awesome something new to halo and i think welcome for sure shooting horizontally is extremely weak though it takes about five to six shots maybe even seven to kill someone and the overall amount of ammo the gun has is probably like i don't even know i think it has like 20 rounds or something has a clip of like seven or eight, I don't really know. I kind of forgot, but it takes up pretty much all your ammo just to kill one person with the horizontal shot. However, if you use it vertically, it turns it into a shotgun. It takes about like one or two shots. If you land all the shots, of course. Um, and yeah, so it just turns into a shotgun. And, you, and it, of course it depends on range too, but overall it pretty much turns into a shotgun when you shoot vertically it like tightens the spread so it's pretty cool i do believe this gun does need a slight damage buff because it's supposed to be a power weapon at least i think it is 
and it just doesn't feel like one. So who knows? Maybe it can be used really well against like grunts in campaign. It seems like this is more of a crowd control weapon, more of like a campaign weapon you would use against grunts, possibly even against flood spores. Who knows? Flood flood confirmed. Flood uh maybe the flood will be in this game. Who knows? I mean, there's so many signs that says flood will be in this game so who knows i don't know but one thing's for sure it's definitely meant the horizontal shot does is meant for like a lot of enemies at once which is something you don't really get in multiplayer so it's kind of it's kind of i don't know don't know how i feel about this gun i think it does need a buff though but we'll see what happens so moving on to the rocket launcher i mean the rocket launcher just feels like any other rocket launcher in halo you know, you shoot someone, the rocket goes boom, and they're dead. That's really all there is. There's not m many changes to it. Um, it does look like the explosion, the area of the explosion maybe was nerfed a bit. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell, but it really just feels like your typical rocket launcher. Not much has uh, changed, changed about the uh, rocket launcher. Now, this weapon, the Ravenger, I don't necessarily know if it's a power weapon, but this weapon is pretty powerful, so I'm just going to say it's a power weapon. And this was probably my favorite weapon from the flight. I love the look of this weapon. It's it's a three-round burst plasma gun. It takes about, like, five shots of this weapon to get a kill, so about two bursts and they're dead. It's a pretty strong gun, but the reason I love it the most is because of the alternate fire mode. You're able to heat up, you know, a giant ball of red hot plasma and just blanket an area with you know burning red plasma making it perfect for area denial it's freaking awesome i love this i think it's so cool so being able to prevent people from your, grabbing your flag you know power ups power weapons etc i think is awesome or if you're playing strongholds you could you know launch one of those uh burning plasma shots to kind of blanket the stronghold so they don't cap it and stuff like that i think it's awesome it opens up a lot of potential i think in terms of like gameplay it's really cool so that's about all the weapons i think i, I might have missed a weapon i'm not sh too sure but i think i covered about all of them and what i think needs some tweaks and stuff so let's move on to the equipment and some of the equipment was was kind of I think we only got like three equipment, so we're going to go ahead and just talk about those. So let's begin with the grapple shot. I think it's fun to use. I was actually worried that it would have unlimited range, but it actually has quite a short range, which makes it feel not too overpowering. It's probably the best equipment we've ever got in Halo. I love swinging around as if I'm Spider-Man. It's really cool doing that. And you could store up to, I think, like five five grapple shots and this goes with all the equipment you could store up to five i believe for each one and i actually like that because it's like a halfway mark between having it unlimited like in reach and but at the same time having it limited like in halo 3 because in halo 3 once you get an equipment you know you toss it out you can only use it once but this is kind of like the middle ground of that and I, I it seems like they do that a lot with this game um it's like the middle ground of it you know, it's not unlimited, but you can use it more than once, which I think is a cool concept. Uh, we'll see how that evolves, though. See if it, like, gets changed around. Maybe people find it too OP or something. I don't know. We'll see how that evolves throughout the uh, lifespan of Infinite. But, yeah, you could just swing around like Spider-Man. You can even grapple weapons towards you. Weapons, power-ups, maybe even objectives. Not too sure because um all we got to play was slayer so there was no objectives we could test out with the uh grapple shot if you try shooting while grappling it completely cancels the grapple making it so you can't shoot or do anything while grappling as a matter of fact you can't really do anything while grappling which is a good good balance i think so because it would be insane if you could just grapple and shoot at the same time i think that'd be a little too overpowering but um, if you shoot or something, it just drops you to the floor. So I think that's a good balance. The drop wall or the drop shield, whichever floats your boat, is the least interesting equipment. I found myself not using it too much as the shield itself takes a while to deploy. The wall breaks easily, so having it take so long to deploy is not worth the trade-off in my opinion. Although I could see this work better on bigger maps. Like say you're trying to get like... Um, or it could just be used for, like, setting up positions. Like, if you're playing, um, I don't know, let's say, I guess, strongholds, you could th 
throw down a couple shields like if you're capturing an enemy stronghold i think it's really good for that you can kind of like fortify your position and just like throw down you know a lot of shields and stuff to kind of help you cap it and stuff i think that's a cool concept and for bigger maps you know i think it will work better because um you know in bigger maps you're gonna want to like stay in some certain positions to kind of you know get shots off of people shots on people and stuff like that like if you're a sniper you're gonna want to like maybe drop a couple shields around snipe people and stuff like that so it has its uses but in arena i don't know it just kind of felt it, it took too long to to deploy and the shields themselves just were very weak it only took like one or two shots to break it it can block nades which i think is the most useful part of it you can block nades with it so i like the community to decide on that i really don't know i think because I can understand where they're coming from, you know, you're able to, like, carry up to five of them, so you obviously don't want them to be super durable, but uh, maybe they could buff the uh, the shield health slightly, or make it so you can only carry, like, buff the shield health, and maybe be able to only carry three instead of five. They could do that. I think there's a lot of stuff they could work around with, but yeah, I'll let the community decide on that one as well, because I, I'm fine with whichever route it really goes. The threat sensor was okay. I would sometimes try to place a sensor across the map where they were possibly spawning so you could see them coming, where they're coming from early on. The range of the sensor is small. It looked more effective in the trailer. There's not much I can say about it. I was expecting it to be something similar to Promethean Vision, which thankfully it's not. It's okay. I don't think there's anything too interesting about it um i'm not sure if it needs like a buff or a nerf i think it's in an okay spot i guess i mean it could be used for like kind of just seeing where they spawn um or maybe if you're just like covering an angle you could kind of shoot one out and stuff i don't know it, it, it was okay it wasn't really strong or like super weak i thought it was okay that's really all, all i could say about the uh the threat sensor i believe it's called the threat sensor or at least something along the the lines of that The movement in this game. The movement in Halo Infinite was alright. When you jumped, you felt floaty like in Halo 3. You were able to super slide and sprint was nerfed, almost making it unnecessary to be in the game. You're still able to crouch strafe and clamber. It really just felt like watered down Halo 5 movement. I mean, I loved Halo 5 because of all the crazy movements you can learn, but I completely understand that I was in the minority when it came to loving Halo 5's movement. Um, so, you know, I'm fine with the change if that's what people want, which I, you know, I know a lot of people didn't like Halo 5's movement. I, for say, did. I think having, like, a skill gap to the movement was really cool. But, you know, if they lower that, I guess it's fine if, if that's what the community wants. Another thing is the player c collision. It's been turned off. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about this. I mean, on the bright side, people no longer get in my way when shooting. I think I do need more time to decide whether it's good or bad for the game, because, you know, on the bright side, people don't get in your way anymore. You know, on the negative side, it's like, you can't do, like, funny, like, cool stuff, like, knocking people off the map and stuff, or just, I don't know, being a troll, I guess. <laughs> but I don't know. I think that's what they're trying to prevent. But that also goes to, like, them trying to make it more modern. Because if you see games, I think, like, Valorant. I believe Valorant. I haven't played Valorant. But from what I've seen, I believe Player co Collision is turned off on there, too. As well as, um, I think, Apex Legends. Probably Fortnite, too. I don't know. Um, so they were kind of trying to take the more modern approach and turn it off. Um, so I, I don't know how I feel on that. I feel kind of like a half and half on that on having player collision on or off so i don't know I, I think i need more time with the game overall i just need more time with the game to have um kind of like properly judge all this stuff but i'm just going off of what i think right now um of course you know stuff is certainly going to change so i don't know we'll see what happens the maps so let's talk about the maps the three maps we saw in this flight were bizarre recharge and live fire bizarre was by far my favorite map as I love symmetrical maps. I just love symmetrical maps. I think they're the best kind of maps you can ever play. Um, I do love some asymmetrical maps, but symmetric I just fall for freaking symmetrical maps. Symmetrical maps like the pit, uh, midship, you know, all those maps are I love those kind of maps, man. They're, they're just so good. So that's really why Bizarre was, was my favorite. But not only that, you know, it was cool seeing 
chickens running around bringing some life to the map um, I believe you could even see the space elevator being repaired or something which is such a cool like detail I think that's really awesome another one of the maps was recharge and I like to call that one grapple city because there was a lot of verticality to this map making the grapple shot shine a lot in this map because of all the verticality and last but not least live fire live fire I see get some hate from people and live fire was a very simple map it wasn't as complex as the others I think this map was perfect for newcomers I mean it's literally a training map so it fits that role perfectly and I think it's fine being simple the way it is I think it's a great starter map and that's really why 343 it seems like you use that as the first map in the flight because it's it's a simple map it's it's made to like you know kind of just let you get into the flow and stuff and then they hit you with like a a map like recharge where it has a lot of verticality and stuff like that so i think i think it was fine some people are hating on it that's fine you know of course not everyone's gonna like the same maps and stuff but i can see what they were doing with uh live fire and i think it's a good fit for being like the newcomer friendly map or just being a simple map for anyone to really learn overall though the maps were okay i don't think any of them were memorable like the pit midship or like valhalla or something like that i don't think there were those kind of style of maps but you know they were okay i just hope we do get more of a variety of maps because 343 tends to be only making unsc themed maps or like human maps you know because in halo 5 the only other map that's not unsc i believe is <laughs> probably truth which is midship um that's really all, all that comes to mind and the rest of the maps were just like like unsc facilities or stuff like that um or like cities and stuff i don't know i mean i hope we have more of a variety you know i'd love to fight on a banished themed map which i feel like it definitely is a possibility like a, a banished airship or some banished base maybe throw in some forerunner maps as well because we didn't see many of those um i mean we did have coliseum which was entirely forerunner in halo 5 so that was kind of good but you know i hope we have like more interesting maps that look unique and awesome shoot man maybe they can even make like a map based on where you're on the guardian guardian like in halo 5 guardians there was this one campaign mission where you run down a guardian and it would be actually kind of cool to like make a map on a guardian like that i think that'd be pretty cool it would definitely be unique and, and awesome, I think. Maybe some nighttime maps as well. The lighting is so much better on this game. It's not like Halo 5 where you're a literal freaking glow stick in the dark. So I think night maps would work better on this. Although I saw a lot of people back in the day for the Halo Infinite, or not Halo Infinite, the Halo 5 beta, people were complaining about, I believe it's Eden being like way too dark and that's unfortunate man i mean I, it, it was a little dark i will agree but they freaking blasted the, <laughs> the it, it sucked man because that map was cool it it like made that map unique it being like dark and kind of hard to see your targets i don't know i don't know how i feel about that i hope they don't like i hope they have nighttime maps where it's actually kind of hard to see because i think that makes the map stand out as well Let's move on to the bots. So having bots in Halo has always been something I wanted since the Halo Reach, di Reach days. I remember talking with my brother about how cool it would be if we could, you know, play some custom games with bots. As many other games like COD Black Ops 2 had bots. I'm glad we finally have gotten bots. But I personally think this is something we should have gotten a long time ago. I'm not going to lie. When bots were a cool feature back then. Anyways, the bots in this game work pretty well. I do think the Spartan bots should be increased in difficulty, as I never dropped a game against any of the bots, and I don't think really anyone did. Maybe there's a certain few, but it's like very small. I think everyone won against the bots, even on Spartan difficulty. And I was expecting Spartan difficulty difficulty to be challenging. You know, it was a little difficult, because it, it was strange at times, because the bots would be like brain dead sometimes they would just not react or anything and not move much but other times they would do god tier strafes or nades it, it was weird it was very inconsistent i would say and they i believe they wanted it to simulate real players but at the end of the day i don't think they did they they just really didn't and playing the social arena that they put up for two hours really just showed that because man i 
dude, I got a rude awakening with freaking social arena. Regardless of how easy the bots can be, it's still neat that they added this. As for like new players who come into the franchise can practice with bots, or if you just want to like relax, you know, take a chill pill and just shoot some bots, you know, they definitely fill that role. So overall, it's a positive just having the bots, but I do personally, I think the Spartan difficulty should be increased a little bit, maybe make them more aware or something. Of course, you don't want them to have like aimbot or something because they do want them to be like somewhat like real players. Ooh, let's get into the customization, man. The customization is is awesome. Customization in this game is the best we've ever seen. I think that's a fact for sure. There are many more options of what you could change. However, it does come at the expense of being able to choose your own colors. A lot of the colors are now presets and they're called coatings now and can't be changed. I found this sad as I kept thinking to myself, what if I was able to change every single piece of color on my own and instead of like getting presets you were able to like get the colors instead and like do it on your own or something i don't know um i, I just found it a little sad because i i mean i couldn't help but think like what if i could do it myself you know i do think if you can get past that you'll enjoy how much you can customize your spartan now you can have your own personal ai change your gloves etc and apparently there's a lot more you could change that wasn't included into the flight the armor itself actually looks good it's not like halo 5 where every piece of armor looks the same the armors are more simplistic while still having some highly detailed armor like the samurai armor you know i think customization took a step back with the colors but took many more steps forward with everything else that is now customizable and i'd love to see like crossover armors like i know it lore wise it probably wouldn't make sense Cause there's also a lore option which is cool for all the armor pieces that you could check out um but i i don't know i mean i would love to see some crossovers like maybe have some like a doom helmet or maybe like the samus helmet or like stuff like that i think that'd be kind of cool of course it does have to like look good and stuff but i'd love to see like crossover armor kind of stuff like that i think that'd be awesome who knows what will happen though we'll see Oh, the audio. I was quite amazed on how good the soundtrack is in this game. It's been a long time since I sat in the main menu listening to music. I straight up just sat there for 40 minutes just listening to the music. And it just truly reminded me of Halo. I think the soundtrack, the music in this game is amazing. I hope they make good use of it in the uh, campaign. And, you know, I just can't wait, man. The soundtrack is so good. I, I can't wait for the whole soundtrack to release so I could just listen to all of them. It's freaking awesome, man. As for the gun audio, 343 seems to take the more realistic approach when it comes to the gun audio. I was always more of a fan of what Bungie did with their gun audio in, you know, you know Halo CE or Halo 3. Each gun sounded unique. However, it's just a small nitpick for me. I don't mind the more realistic gun audio for the weapons but overall i think um i loved uh halo 3 or bungie's approach rather to the weapons they all sounded unique and stuff and in halo infinite they're all more realistic which i guess is okay but i'd rather have the more unique approach to the gun audio the ui in this game definitely looks more modern definitely took that modern approach that games have these days they have those like tab things where you kind of switch between tabs like the play tab the customize tab and you know the, t the shop tab which is like simulating a lot of modern games like fortnite apex etc the only problem i ran into with the ui is that the lo lobby system is no longer exists or maybe i just couldn't find it this is something i feared would happen and it seems like it might be happening again it seems like you can no longer check out other players spartans their emblems you know their challenges they completed stuff like that like think of like as like as of like halo reach halo reach lobby or halo 4 lobby seems like they've completely scratched that um of course you know it is tech preview so not everything is going to be in there but i really hope we still have some kind of lobby system maybe it's just something in the past that games just don't do these days because i do see a lot of games not have that 
I don't know, man. I think Halo 5, or not Halo 5, <laughs> Halo, Halo Infinite could be, like, the one that, like, shows that the lobby system's really cool. Where you could check out people's, you know, codings and stuff like that. Another issue I had, I guess this counts as UI, um, was the outlines of Spartans. I think a lot of people did realize the outlines did were kind of unnecessary. It, it's difficult to see other players' armor, which is, like, the whole point of Infinite was... Or, like, not the whole point, but, like, a huge part of Infinite was being able to, like, you know, make your own Spartan yours. And with these outlines in game, you, <laughs> my voice just cracked there. But with these outlines in game, you can't even see like people's armor because of these outlines. So I, I think they really should just remove the outlines. You couldn't even tell when their shields were low as well because of their out because of the outlines. Although they did mention they were working on a better way for people to see when player shields are low and stuff. However, we still have the problem of not being able to see people's armor. I think the best way for this to be fixed would be by removing the outlines and having waypoints on your teammates head with their service tag just like in every other Halo game like in Halo 3 um, I believe Halo 2 as well Halo 4 really just like all the other Halo games where you had the waypoint or their Spartan tag above your teammates head and of course you know for the enemies they don't have anything above their head so you'll be able to tell who's a friend and foe um, I really don't understand the outline approach. I think they were overdoing it a little bit with the outlines. Because a lot of modern games as well have outlines. And so they were probably like, oh, you know what, guys? Let's just throw it out there or throw it on to infinite just so it makes it feel more modern. But I, it just felt very unnecessary, I think. Um, it needs to be changed. Maybe have a toggle option where you could either have outlines or the waypoints above your teammates head something like that i think something certainly has to change about that though for it to actually be good now i want to talk about the performance of the game so i'm talking like frame rate uh you know the quality of the game I can't speak for the new gen consoles and pc as i played through the xbox one Although I've heard there was many issues with PC, mostly around the frame rate and the game not being optimized. On Series X, I heard it runs great, so I can't say much about um, PC and the new gen consoles, as I didn't experience those, but I did see people talk about that kind of stuff. So I will be giving my Xbox One point of view, and I mean, it was, it was playable, but I don't think it's ideal. The frame rate would run at like a max 30 frames, and it was hard to adapt to this because I'm used to playing on uh, higher frame rates. And it makes me wonder like how Halo 5 was 60 frames per second and Halo Infinite, which is a newer game, is only 30 FPS. And that's when it kind of clicked for me. I believe the reason for such a low frame rate on the Xbox One is because of split screen. Um, now, I'm not a huge tech guy, so I could totally be wrong. But I do remember originally on Halo 5 their reasoning for taking out split split screens because they wanted consistent 60 fps and they couldn't do that with split screen built in regardless of the reason of why it's a lower frame rate i highly recommend not playing it on the old consoles anyways 30 fps is something i would expect from a 360 game and that's just really that's really it it, it shouldn't be 30 frames um I mean, I personally believe it shouldn't even be on the original Xbox. I think the original Xbox hardware is, like, way too old. I mean, this console came out, like, in, what, 2014? And we're in 2021. So, if you're... I mean, I think it's fine. Like, because, you know, there's people who are, like, tight on money or... I mean, like me right now, you can't even get a new-gen console if you wanted to. Because a lot of scalpers, you know, scalpers happened. So, I think for now... Maybe like the first year of Infinite, I think it's fine having Xbox One support. But I think after that, they should just like kind of cut off Xbox One. Because I don't know, I feel like it will just hold back the game. Um, So yeah, that's kind of how I feel about that. It's just kind of weird. I mean, it's kind of like if you look at, I think, Black Ops 3. Black Ops 3 was also on 360. And they had to cut out like what? I think it was a campaign. Yeah, I think it was a campaign. They had to cut out the campaign because, you know, it, it was just... The Xbox 360, 360 was just, like, not powerful enough or something. And then eventually, you know, they just cut off 360. 
or yeah, just making new CODs on 360 because you know it, it's freaking 360. It's not powerful enough and stuff like that. Or they can't make their games better if they're like on this low, super low tier console. So I don't know. We'll see how that kind of goes about. Um, I just highly recommend not playing on the Xbox One. Unless you absolutely have to for maybe like a year until you could get like the new console. I think it's fine. But um, yeah, if you're like coming into Infinite, definitely, you know, play on PC or get one of the newer consoles. Because, man, dude, the frame rate was rough. Quality was okay. Like the game looked okay. But frame rate, man, I think frame rate's like one of the important staples. And having it that low is really did kind of hurt my experience on the game. Anyways, guys, that's all I have to say about Infinite. I think it has the potential to be the greatest Halo game. Many of the flaws I found to be performance issues and a couple balances, balancing issues, as well as a couple nitpicks. But other than that, it seems to be on a good route to be the best Halo game we've ever had since Halo 3. Honestly, I'm mostly waiting on the full PvP experience, as fighting against bots is difficult to tell how the game will actually play out. So, once again, you know, take everything I said with a grain of salt. And with that being said, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let me know what you guys thought about um, the Halo Infinite Tech Preview. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.